You're minding your own business on a peaceful Saturday afternoon. It's a perfect day to do some shopping. Nary a soul in the store. After picking out food for the week, you swing by the home and kitchen supplies aisle for some trash bags and a few other incidentals. Everything is going swimmingly until you grab a 12-pack of toilet paper and throw it into your buggy. The next thing you know, an overly aggressive middle-aged man is shaming and berating you in front of the entire store. You squeeze the Charmin, he says, pointing a gnarled old finger in your face. You, madam, have made the grave mistake of squeezing the Charmin. First she squeezes the tomatoes, then she squeezes the melons, and now she's squeezing the Charmin. Hi, welcome to the Gen Xers. Today we delve into the baffling case of Mr. Whipple, the supermarket manager obsessed with protecting the integrity of Charmin toilet paper. And I do mean obsessed. As you'll see in this video, the man stopped at nothing, including stalking and harassment, to make sure his Charmin remained pure and unsqueezed. Please don't squeeze the charm. Mr. Whipple first terrorized unsuspecting shoppers in 1964. Sure, it was a different time, but was this called for? Can you help me stop those ladies from squeezing charm and bathroom tissue? Reckon I can. Now you women folk, stop squeezing that charm. It didn't stop there. Mr. Whipple did everything from recruit Mrs. Garrett and Boss Hogg. Better look around. Make sure no one's squeezing Charmin on company time. To train parrots. Please don't squeeze my Charmin. And killer robots. Don't, don't squeeze, squeeze Charmin. Charmin. Don't, don't squeeze Charmin. Charmin's doubly fluffy, doubly don't irresistible. Squeeze don't squeeze. <laughs> In order to stop what he perceived as a national crisis, an epidemic of Charmin squeezing. By 1978, Procter & Gamble claimed a survey proved Mr. Whipple was the third most recognizable man in North America, right behind Richard Nixon and televangelist Billy Graham. Maybe that's why he kept getting away with things like this. Someone you know? Why, that's me, squeezing the Charmin. And this? And this? And this? Was Mr. Whipple a, a germaphobe, a control freak, or was it something deeper? Even a novice student of Freud could see that Mr. Whipple's behavior exhibits classic signs of repressed desire. I can't resist it myself. I like to sneak a squeeze on the sly. He desperately wants to squeeze the Charmin himself, but societal norms and his self-proclaimed role as the protector of Charmin's purity prevent him from fulfilling his innermost wishes. This conflict festers inside of him like an infection until he becomes the very villain he fears. Why, Mr. Whipple, what were you doing when the lights went out? He becomes a Charmin squeezer. This is no more clear than when he meets what Carl Jung would call his shadow self. But in reality, this is just a reflection of his innermost desires. Only the black sheep of the family would squeeze Charmin. It was clear that Mr. Whipple couldn't resist the forbidden fluff. But by the late 70s, he had become a self-hating Charmin squeezer and yet another victim of the patriarchy. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. Squeeze me instead. It went on like this for decades. Mr. Whipple would berate others for doing the very things he did in his own home when the lights were out and the curtains were drawn. Don't squeeze the Charmin. So how did Mr. Whipple fare as the world moved on? As people got bolder about their Charmin squeezing, did he come out into the open? Unfortunately, no, at least not right away. Even as competing grocer Mr. Hoffmeyer encouraged his customers, encouraged them to squeeze the Charmin and his business grew, 
Mr. Whipple could not let go of his prejudice. Hoffmeyer's letting him squeeze the Sherman. I can't believe it. Look, Sherman's so big and fluffy, they want to squeeze it. He fought on bravely for a bit. But when it was clear that the worm had turned and nothing, least of all one man, could turn back the tide of the great squeezing, he just kind of vanished. Then, something changed. Hug me, squeeze me. In the late 1980s, Mr. Whipple reemerged and began encouraging people to squeeze the Charmin. Squeeze it. Why? No one really knows. Although rumors persist that a two-week stint in the desert with nothing but a family pack of Charmin and Hall and Oates' greatest hits had a lot to do with it. Watch out, boy. She'll chew you up. So what was Mr. Whipple? A repressed squeezer? A cultural icon? A fighter of fights for the common man's toilet paper? One thing's for sure. He left a soft, fluffy, yet indelible mark on advertising history. And while he may or may not want you to squeeze the Charmin anymore, he definitely wants you to hit like and subscribe.